Okay, so two more to go. Next one, storing a list of data. So I'm looking this time at a different example app. I've uh, started off with five components. I've got some labels, a text input box, and a button that says store name, and a notifier component. At the moment, the app looks like this. And the idea is we're going to make it so the user can type names in to the app, and it will store those names permanently. So rather than just in variables that obviously disappear when the app uh, is closed, this is going to store in a more persistent fashion using a database. So I'm actually going to sort that out now. Uh, for this, we need to use a, well, I'm going to use this tiny DB component, and I'm going to give it a name, and I'm going to call it names database, because that's what it's going to store. Okay. So uh, first of all, so the thing that's going to trigger uh, the storage from happening, uh, storage happening is going to be um, when the store button is clicked. So when the user clicks this, and this is a really good opportunity to add in some robustness. So this idea of I can well, robust s. It's very late and I'm very tired. Okay, so some robustness and um, we can have a look. Uh, doing something along these lines. So I can check that as long as the name is not blank, oops, in equal to is not that. Uh, okay. So I can have a look, and what I'm going to do is as soon as the button is clicked, I need to get the text from the input box, and the text is going to be. Uh, Whoops, I'm not setting the text. I need to get the text. Get name input dot text. Awesome. Why does it keep coming up with that? Name input dot text. That's better. Okay, and all I'm going to check that it's not. In fact, rather than using this logical thing, I can check that it's not empty. And I'm going to combine that with this not operator. If the text is not empty, then we can go ahead and again I'm going to do a procedure and I'm going to call it uh, add to database okay so in fact let me make my naming styles consistent add to database um, so as soon as we've clarified that they're not just trying to store an empty name I'm going to call my database procedure and inside add to database, now I'm going to have a look at storing two things. So as the app promises on the home screen, this amazing app will record all of your friends' names and how long they are. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need to work out how long the person's name is. So I'm going to create a new variable. And this time it's going to be a local variable because it's only going to be used inside the add to database procedure. And I'm going to call it length. And then I'm going to use my handy friend here length to check how long the text is and at this point I'm actually going to have a look at using an input to the procedure to add database and I'm rather than uh, keeping to keeping referring to the property of the text box I'm going to pass the text box in as data so rather the sorry the text that's in the text box so rather than having to say name input dot text because I've now passed this is in as an argument to the procedure I can now simply refer to this as name. So when I'm working out the length, all I have to say is length get name. Now I have two variables inside the scope of my procedure. One is the name, which was what is entered by the user, and one is the length. Uh, it would be a good point at this, uh, at this time to kind of check that this has been working. So I'm going to use my notifier just to show a message to the user um, to check that what they entered is what they expected. So look, this is kind of like string concatenation in Python, so I can join variables together with separate strings. You entered the name. This had this many letters. So I'm just going to add another extension to the join block. And this time I'm going to get my variables. You entered this name. This had this many letters. So at this point, uh, the add to, database, uh, add to database procedure doesn't actually add anything to a database. What it does is it calculates the length of the name entered and displays it to the user. So we better test that this is working. Uh, so first of all, let's check my robustness. If I press store name, nothing should happen. Good. So at this point, let's just put a little error message in here. I'm going to do another show alert. 
And this time I need to simply say, you must enter a name, always describe the problem to the user about what they're doing wrong. So now I should see this in effect. If I press store name and it is blank, good, I get my error message appearing. So while ever, uh, if not is empty name input dot text evaluates to false, it's going to display my error message. But as soon as I put my name in and press store name, it should do this next bit. Runs the procedure. You entered the name Bob. This had this many letters. Three. Okay, so we've validated, sorry, verified that the uh, what we've done so far is working. So now we can have a look at doing this into the database. So the way I'm going to store the data in the database is I'm always going to... Um, have a look at what's in there first and I'm going to use the same tag each time so I'm always going to look for this data called name list and I'm going to uh, add something on to my name list and the thing that I'm going to add on to my name list is going to be the name. What I need to make sure now is that my error isn't uh, isn't going to cause a problem in that if I try and retrieve something called the name list, it doesn't cause a problem. So rather than it being a string, what I need to make sure is because this is going to be an empty list, if the name list isn't found in the database, I just need to pull back an empty list. So what it's going to do, it's going to get a list. If it's, if, if it's not already there, it's just an empty list. If it is already there, it's going to be a list of the names and it's going to add the name being that has been entered to the database and then the final step is simply to write it back to the database using store database again using uh, sorry store value and then again using the same tag so I'm storing a value in the database it's kind of like a filing cabinet I'm filing it under name list and the thing that I am storing to the list is going to be Ooh, hold on, I just need a variable to store. That's cool. So let's get names list and put it in a variable and make sure it's taken out first. Like this. And then I need to make sure that get variable is name list. And then I can store names list back in the database. Okay, and hopefully this should work. And then one last little thing we could do is just display a message to say, again, just to tell the user what's going on, stored the name and its length successfully. So this should all become a bit clearer in the next tutorial, in the next part of this tutorial, which is going to be about retrieving the data and ordering it in different ways. So let's just check that that works. So again, I'm going to test with Bob, store the name, tells me how many letters Bob's name had, and then it tells me that it's been added to the database.